Hey y'all, welcome back to our channel. I hope all is well on this holiday weekend. So as you look at the screen, parents have been jailed and Bryson Muir have been, has been found safe. And some of you may think I report on these stories, you know, a little late. But for me, the algorithm is important, but getting the information about the story is sometimes is more important to me. Um, and so I have been listening about this story about this young man who somehow or another ended up at his grandmother's house, from what I understand, was taken to his grandmother's house in Ohio. And when he arrived, he his face was black and blue. Apparently, the grandmother took pictures. And to corroborate that, I'm sure the police will be able to um, look at her phone and see what the timestamp was. Um, and apparently... The grandmother said that Bryson told her the dad had allegedly did this to him, but that he deserved it. Um, so the story goes on to say that um, before she knew it, Bryson was on his way back uh, with his parents in a car. And um, when she called the police and told them that she believed that, you know, this young man allegedly was uh you know, maybe in danger, the cops did pull the car over, but they didn't find Bryson in the car. The cops are alleging now that the only thing that could have happened was another car came and um, took him back to the compound where he lived. So it was almost three weeks that had gone by and it was said that the police officers got in contact with the parents and they were trying to make some arrangements to meet to see the child, to see what was going on. And there were some arrangements made, but those arrangements were broken. So yesterday at about 6 a.m., um, and they said that that's when prayer was going on, but typically when they do raids and things, they do it early in the morning. And yes, maybe they didn't know 6 a.m. was when they did prayer. But most of the time, when the popo, the feds come, they come early in the morning, Okay, so I don't think it had specifically anything to do with the fact that they were having prayer. I think it was just a time where they try to get people before they get started for the day, you know, like the element of surprise. And um, allegedly they found Bryson safe, which is great. But the parents that you see here on the screen were jailed. Now, this gentleman is Mr. Muir. He was uh, some football player um, in the NFL and that's Brian's uh, mom. They've both been held in jail. So let's look at the news um, report. And then I'm going to come back with my commentary. Now, I know you guys all have heard about this. And the bottom line is we're just happy that this child is safe. But, our, uh, yeah, let's listen to this news report. And then I'll just comment um, on what I have been thinking in my head about this whole story. Uh, but let's talk about it and let's, let's listen and then we'll come back and talk about it. Eighteen year old boy and the son of former Colts player Daniel Muir has been found safe this morning by Indiana State Police in Logansport. Bryson's parents, Kristen and Daniel Muir, now both arrested. Kristen faces. Now, this is a sad picture, but for me, when I look in their eyes now, granted, they're both arrested and are having to take mug shots, but their eyes looks so distant. That's just an observation of mine. That's all. It's a preliminary charge of obstruction of justice. Daniel faces preliminary charges of obstruction of justice and domestic battery. Right now, our Rich Nye is in Logansport outside of Cass County Jail following the latest developments. And, and Rich, what have you learned so far? Karen, Daniel and Kristen Murr are currently in the Cass County Jail awaiting a hearing that happens at one o'clock here in the Cass County government building behind me and at that hearing they'll find out if perhaps they will get a bond so that they could post bond and be released today before the July 4th holiday. Now early this morning the Indiana State Police SWAT team they executed a search warrant on this property about 6 a.m. This is in Logansport. This is where the Muir family lives. Now this is the um, compound where he lives. Um, it's called Straightway, Indiana, and I think they have a straightway in another uh, area. Mr. Muir is the pastor over this one, and I think it's Pastor Dowell, who is the pastor um, at the other location. I've listened 
Um, I had been subscribed to his channel, I guess maybe a couple of years ago. I would listen to him. It's like when the pandemic and stuff was going on, but I haven't, you know, really been engaged with the channel, um, lately. But, um, if you look up straightway, you'll see pastor, I think it's Dowell. And then I guess at this location in Indiana is, um, pastor Muir lives. The property is owned by Servant Leaders Foundation. The religious group that lives and meets here is called Straightway Indiana Goshen. Daniel Muir is the pastor and the leader of that group. Bryson's grandmother reported alleged abuse of the 14-year-old boy back on June 16th while he was visiting her home in the Cleveland, Ohio area. She provided a photo to police of Bryson with a black eye and a swollen face. And she said Bryson told her that his dad caused the injuries as a punishment he deserved. She believed the abuse happened on the Logansport property, and police have been trying to locate the boy for 18 days. It appears Bryson was likely here on this property the whole time, but the parents were not cooperating with the investigation and allegedly backed out of a meeting with the state police last Friday to bring Bryson to investigators to talk about the, uh, the uh, investigation. That led police to getting that search warrant this morning and going onto the property. And again, Bryson was found. He is safe and well. And police say that the parents were taken into custody without incident. Just nothing but positive vibes. Uh, here we are, you know, trying to find this child, make sure that he's alive and well. And ultimately, after three weeks of. OK, so as you can see from the reports, um, it was 18 days from the time that the grandmother reported this issue um, of what she saw was abuse. Um, and it was reported that her grandson said that, hey, my dad did this, but I deserved it. So she reported it to the authorities. The authorities tried for 18 days, almost three weeks, guys, to lay eyes on the child, to set up a meeting, to come to, you know, to try to clarify and get some clarification as to what was going on. Um, and the communication broke down and that's why they charged the parents with obstruction because they decided that they didn't, I guess, want to meet, um, with the authorities. Now, let me just be very clear here. I don't know all the details of the story, but what I do know is, um, a lot of these stories, if you're in the true crime sector or you watch some of these stories, they don't always turn out really well. So the police in that particular jurisdiction wanted to lay eyes on a child, question a child and speak to the parents. Um, and let me just say this. If you are a YouTube content creator or just a regular parent, if CPS gets called on you, say for instance, right. And I'm sure CPS wanted to child protective services wanted to investigate. Well, one of the things that you have to do out, God, thank God, I, I've never had CPS called on me. But one of the things I do understand is they want to lay eyes on the child. They want to make sure the child is safe. They want to question the child and investigate. And then after their investigation, they can release them back to you or they go into custody. Well, it was 18 days that they could not do this. So if you decide that you don't, I mean, there are YouTubers who even have CPS called on them for no reason. Okay but they still have to produce that child. They still have to abide by the law. When the authorities come out, they want to lay eyes on the kid. Now it was 18 days. They set up a meeting allegedly and allegedly they didn't cooperate. So that's why they're being charged with obstruction. My question is why didn't they just produce the child, talk to the authorities, get this cleared up long time ago so people can move on with them lives. But they didn't do that. Hence they're in the position in my mind where they are right now being charged with obstruction okay they obstructed the investigation of them s assessing to see whether the child was safe and they think that the child was on the property all along now had they why my thing was just produce the kid let them see the kid talk to the kid if there's nothing wrong and nothing going on then you go about on your with your life but apparently there were the pictures of the child being uh with a black eye and uh, a busted lip and he said his dad did it now his dad is a big guy now i do believe in discipline your children but when they come up with black eyes and busted lips that's what you call abuse okay that's what i would assume what i see if that did happen and a, a grown person did that that's what you call abuse okay um and so my question is why didn't they just produce the child 
And then none of this, we, you know, 18 days um, and looking, it, it got out on YouTube. So why did they just not produce a the child? There's no special rules for them because they are part of a religious organization. Everybody has to abide by these rules. If somebody calls CPS on me and I had ch little children, I have to produce the child. And if I don't produce the child and I obstruct justice and, and, and decline, then I will end up going to jail. That's how this thing works. So there's no special rules for people. I just wonder why did they not produce this child? Now you hear what the cop said. It was all peace and love. We just wanted to lay eyes on a child. Um, there was no incident. They took these individuals away. Yes, they came with SWAT because they do know that, um, you know, maybe there's weapons there. They don't know. I don't know. So they just had to take an abundance of precaution. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't tell with nobody these days, whether it's this organization, another organization, just regular schmegular people. Um, you know, you don't know how people are going to respond to something like this. But my question is, why? Why, oh, why did they just not produce the child? Produce the child, show the child, so everybody could go on. So my thought process is you didn't produce them because you didn't want to. But why did, wouldn't you want to? Why would you not want to not have this additional, you know, these additional eyes on you or any additional allegations? So now they're both in jail, locked up. My thing, you you discipline your child. But um, a lot of people that I've spoken to, they've got hit with, you know, extension cords and brooms and stuff, and they were abused. I'm not saying that you shouldn't discipline your kid, but if you got to resort to choking them out um, and punching them in the face and giving them a black eye, um, that is abuse. That means you can't control your anger. So I think all of this could have been avoided if they had just um, shown the child. Let's see what else he has. To say. You know, reaching out. Uh, yeah, he was found located. Uh, so uh, definitely win in our books. <laughs> Daniel. Mur so that's why they look like looking like this right now with orange jumpsuits on. I understand that's your child. But if the grandmother and the grandma says she's been estranged from her grandson and people are saying that this is some sort of cult, I don't know anything about that. Um, all I know is they were looking for the kid. The grandmother took pictures of the kid allegedly with that black eye and busted lip that we've seen all across the screen. The attorneys are saying that they be, are being it's a, some sort of witch hunt and they're being accused, um, you know, um, and, and not being rightfully accused of this situation. Everybody's innocent until proven guilty. So we'll just watch this story and see what happens. Um, but I just don't know. Why didn't they just produce the child? I mean, those bruises, I, it is my personal opinion that they didn't want the child to be seen because if the child has still had those bruises and marks on them, well, the question is where they come from and who gave them those bruises and marks on his face. So were they trying to hold the child until the bruises and stuff went away? I don't know. But if there was nothing to hide, you know, and it's not what we've seen, why didn't they just produce the child and let, let you see? I've even watched YouTubers on channel. They even, you know, videotaped this stuff. And was like, you know, the CPS done got called on me 10, 15 times. Um, and I'm have to produce my kids. They have to see the kids. They come with the police and they have to see the kids. And if they can't find the kids, you're going to go to jail. And this is exactly what happened. They charged them with both of them with obstruction. And then the father with, um, I guess, the thing you know, the battery or whatever that particular charge is. So guys, I'm gonna follow this story. And, um, you know, if they're being uh, accused illegally, I guess we'll hear the whole story, but I'm sure the child has been taken into the custody of CPS. He is going to be questioned. He is going to be, um, you know, asked some questions and we're going to see what happens thereafter. Um, but the fact that it's disturbing to me where a child is almost a cycle of abuse. Um, abuse happens in children and in adults uh, where sometimes the woman will say, I deserve this. I shouldn't have, you know, ran off with my mouth, you know, so he busted my eyes and lips. No. So for a child to be saying, I deserve that, there's a problem right off the bat. So, guys, I'm going to follow this story. What do you say about this situation? Um, you know, there's always something we can learn in the news. And I just know as a regular citizen, if, you know, if I had CPS called on me, which I've never had in all the years, you know, raising my children. But I know people who've had 
CPS called on them and they have to produce the kids. They have to allow these people into the home to see if they're eating, they're being neglected, they're educational wise, they're going to school. You have to, you, you're not above the law. You have to abide by the rules that are set out here. And all they wanted to do was lay eyes on the child. So they laid eyes on the child. The child is in custody. And we'll see what happens after that. I just don't understand why they, I think they made arrangements according to the police, if it's true. And they were coordinating a meeting, but then they decided not to. So they got a warrant and they went on in to get the child. Because how many stories have we seen with mothers, fathers, relatives, Kids are unalive. So this ain't no different. We They're not treating this, oh, because of, you know, we don't, people don't care. They went into for the safety of the child. That's my belief. All right, y'all, let me know what y'all think. They should have just, you know, anteed up the kid and let, let the, let the um, authorities lay eyes on him, talk to him, let them be questioned and call it a day. But no, they didn't want to do that. So hence, here they go. You know, the orange is the new black in their uniforms right now. And I guess they'll be able to bond out eventually. All right, y'all. I'll see you on the next upload. Let's get down into the comments and let me know what you think about this case. Don't make no common sense. All right, y'all. Peace. And I'm out.